All right, it is, my iPad is not wanting to catch up, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, for those of you who are new to our page, uh, my name is Allison Baggett. I am the owner of The Art Studio in Montevallo, Alabama. Um, we offer a class, art classes for kids from preschool up to adults. We do like paint and sip kind of nights for adults as well. And we just have a lot of fun, but um, I am a homeschool mom as well. And so we do our schoolwork here a good bit um, also. And my kids are always creating, always doing stuff at the studio um, and always just have a really good time with it. Um, and I know a lot of you have kind of been forced or pushed into feeling like you're having to homeschool your kids. Um, I would say give yourself grace. Um, you don't have to make up three weeks worth of schedules and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but that is why we're doing this week's um, workshops is just to give you some ideas that are simple and easy and um, fun and interactive for your kids so that they're not on screens all the time if you don't choose for them to be. Um, and for y'all to have a little fun together. So um, we are gonna start today with printmaking. Um, this is one of my favorite activities to do with kids of all ages. Um, this is fun for adults as well. And so I'm gonna show you um, just some really fun ways to do this and probably with supplies that you already have. Um, I will be talking about later on, um, I'm gonna be putting together a creative survival kit for your next three weeks at home, three to four weeks at home, and um, you know, helping you out as far as supplies go and that sort of thing. Um, so if you have any questions about anything that I'm using or where you can get it, uh, just simply ask in the comments and um, I'll get all those answered. My, my internet is lagging, so um, my iPad is not catching up as quickly as I would like, but um, I will go through and answer any questions that we have at the end. Um, and I will try and explain everything as we go so that there shouldn't be any questions about it, but, um, but if I don't answer something that you're curious about or want to know about, um, then feel free to ask away. Um, we will be doing this all week. I did not put a time on Friday just because I'm not sure what my schedule will be on Friday, but um, I did want to leave that day open for a possibility to do another workshop on Friday. Um, and so the schedule is posted on our Facebook page. You can find it. It should be the post under this live, um, but I will actually pin it to the top as an announcement. So um, you should just be able to find it as soon as you pop onto our page. And it is um, at Art Studio Montevallo on Facebook and Instagram. Um, these videos are loaded as soon as I'm done and get it downloaded. These will be loaded onto IGTV. So if you are on IG or on Instagram more often than Facebook, um, you'll be able to find it on there as well. And like I said, we are at Art Studio Montevallo on both Facebook and Instagram. Um, so let's get started. Um, we are, like I said, we're going to be doing printmaking today. And um, this is a really simple, fun, interactive um, project for your kids to do. Um, and I'm going to kind of walk you through how to vary it for different ages and give you some tips on things that they can do um, the older they get, um, things that you could work on together to make this a collaborative piece, um, and just to have some fun with it. All right. So what we're going to do first is um, we're going to talk about our supplies. So what you'll need, um, you probably have these around your house if you're not planning on doing a whole lot of dishes while your kids are at home. So this is just a regular styrofoam plate. Um, you do want styrofoam because you're gonna be able to like draw into it and kind of um, dig out the, the space that you're gonna be using to print. Um, so we're gonna be using that um, for our surface. I'm also gonna be using, these are just um, scratch boards that are made for printmaking. So I'm gonna be using this as well. And this would be included in our um, survival kit that we're, we're gonna be getting ready here soon. So um, those are what we're gonna be using for our surface. You will also need um, a kind of a dull pencil. You don't want it to be super sharp. Um, this is just one that we have around the studio. And then a ballpoint pen. You can also use 
uh, just two different colors of a ballpoint pen, and I'm going to show you why in just a few minutes as well. Um, obviously, scissors, because we're going to cut out the bottom of our styrofoam plate. You're going to need brushes, and it doesn't really matter um, what size or what kind or anything like that. These are some of my favorites. These are um, in a five pack of Crayola uh, brushes, and you can find these pretty much anywhere um, that Crayola products are sold. Um, and so we're just gonna use these two today. This is the blue and the purple. We have a flat purple and a round blue. Um, we're gonna have a cup of water so that I can um, use that on my paper in just a minute. We're actually just gonna be using washable markers. Um, we're gonna be using these kind of like watercolors. And so um, you'll get to see that in just a few minutes. And then the last two things that I'm gonna need are um, a good, heavy paper so this is um watercolor paper it's kind of a heavier paper and it's not going to wrinkle it's not going to um, mess up when you put water on it um, because we are going to wet this paper when we get ready to print and then i just have some painters tape so that i can hold this down this paper is kind of curved and i don't want my water going everywhere so i'm going to tape it down when we get to that point so that i can um, keep it flat and make my surface easier to print on all right, so that's all of our supplies for today. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by drawing out a design. Now, if you have littles, like preschool age, um, kindergarten, that sort of thing, um, this would be a really good way for them to work on um, like tracing lines. You could draw a line out for them and let them come back and trace it with the ballpoint pen. So if you were gonna do that, I'm gonna use, um, actually let's cut out our plate and we'll use that as our example for this one. So all I'm doing is I'm just gonna cut down and you could either cut a circle, they could print with a circle, or you could cut out like a square or a smaller rectangle, whatever, whatever you desire, all right? So I'm going to just cut out a circle and then you can always come back and clean it up when you're done. There we go, I got stuck on it. Um, my circles are never perfect on these, but it's okay, it's really not gonna matter a whole lot. But if you, um, if you are one that wants it to be a perfect circle, then feel free to clean this up after you get it cut out. It's just a little bit hard to do that while you're cutting because of the way the shape of the plate is. All right, so I would like to cut around where the plate kinda goes up just so that I can have a flat surface for sure. So I am gonna go back and clean that up just a little bit and kinda get some of those little ridges off. Let's see. Okay, so I've got a little bit of an area right there that needs to be cleaned up and this one right here. Okay, so it's not perfect, it's not gonna be, it's okay. Um, another option, if you do have little ones that have not used scissors a ton, give them some safety scissors and let them have at it. Um, you know, you could draw out the circle and let them cut it out. It's not going to be perfect, but that, that fine motor skill is so important for kids to have. And um, we, we see it all the time that kids really don't get as much of that as they used to. Um, I can remember cutting stuff like crazy when I was in school but I, I just don't know that it's as um, prominent in school now. So we have seen a lot of kids that have trouble with that fine motor skill. Um, so anyway, we are gonna use this as our surface for, this would be for like our little. So if I wanted to let my child trace um, some lines or some shapes, then what I would do is go in and we could talk about vertical lines, horizontal lines, uh, diagonal lines, dotted lines or dashes. Um, you could talk about spirals. You could talk about, um, you know, wavy lines, squiggly lines, all sorts of different lines. And this is something that we cover in our classes, especially with our little kids. Um, you know, talking about different kinds of lines and all of that. So if I wanted them to trace whatever I drew, then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do a line here. So my line's not gonna be perfectly straight and that's okay. Um, so I'm gonna come in and do a line on there. 
And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do maybe like a swirly line, okay, or a loop. And I'm not digging in all the way. That's gonna be your child's job, okay? So for little ones, it may be easier for you to do bigger loops just until they get comfortable with um, the control of the pen and all of that. Um, but if you feel like they can do it, then try smaller ones and see what they do with it, okay? So now we're gonna do a wavy line. So kind of like heels. All right, and then let's do a dotted line, okay? So kind of like a dash. We're gonna do, we're gonna stop and pick up our pen. And then let's see, let's do some mountains. So some zigzags. All right, so I've got all my lines on here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let my child come back with a ballpoint pen and trace those lines. This does two things. One, it's gonna help them with those fine motor skills of controlling that pen and where the line goes. Um, remind them to take their time. They don't have to rush through this. Um, and if they mess up, it's okay. That's part of printmaking is it's not exact a lot of times and that's really kind of a nice thing about it is it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and so this is a really good way for kids to learn you know, how to work on something and it not come out exactly like they want it to um but it's still going to make a really cool piece all right so they're going to come back with their ballpoint pen and they're going to trace those lines this is also going to ensure that our lines are deep enough so this one is um kind of flimsy i'm gonna have to be careful with that because i did go all the way from edge to edge but it's going to make it where my paint is going to show up a whole lot better um, and my lines are going to show up a whole lot better all right so now i'm going to come back and i'm telling them to press down on here okay so they're gonna have to control that line and let's see we're gonna go around those loops And as you can see, I went off of my pencil line just a little bit, but it didn't make a huge difference, so it's not a big deal. All right, if you are just joining us, we are working on the first day of our free um, art workshop series. These are for activities for you to do um, with your kids at home while we are out of school. Um, if you are a homeschool mama, you are used to being at home, but if you have kids that are in private school or public school, this may be a new adventure for you. And so um, we're just wanting to offer some workshops that will help you throughout this time. Um, just to give you some ideas that are um, using simple supplies that you probably have around your house and um, that are gonna be really fun for your kids to do. So we're working on printmaking today and we're working on what we would do for little bitties um, who have the ability to like follow a line and that sort of thing. Um, we are working on tracing lines and getting control of our pen. Um, so working on fine motor skills really, really throughout this process. All right, so I missed my pencil line um, right there, but it's okay, it's not a big deal. And so I just went back over it with my pen just to deepen that line a good bit. Now I'm gonna go in and get my dash or my dotted line. And I don't know if you can tell it or not, but this is really pushing that line in more um, so that it's a lot deeper than it was with just the pencil. All right, so now we're gonna go in and get that zigzag. And we're really working on those motor skills, those fine motor skills, and getting that where we want it to be. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take some crayola markers these are just washable markers and we're gonna i'm gonna do kind of a rainbow of colors let's see now these markers are in our studio all the time so i may grab one and it may not work probably the same at your house this is a great way to kind of test out your markers um to see if they're working or not so i'm going to color each section 
a different color, all right? This would be a great way to talk about color mixing and you know what happens when you get um, red and yellow together, what happens when um, you have you know blue and yellow. All those sorts of things are gonna be good conversation pieces. And this is probably one that your kids are gonna ask to do over and over again because once they do it one time, they're gonna really understand how to do it on their own and so they're probably gonna want to do this a good bit and it's pretty much mess free. I mean, outside of having water involved, it doesn't really make a huge mess. So you may um, find that your stash of uh, styrofoam plates goes away. So I do apologize for that if that's the case. Um, all right, so we're gonna just continue to color this in in each section. And the cool thing about the styrofoam is it's not going to um, it's not going to dry up. And even if it does, when you put the water on the paper, it kind of reactivates it. So um, it's going to make a really neat print when it's even if it's dry. All right, we've got a blue here. And I'm staying pretty close to my lines, but it doesn't have to stay, you know, exactly in the lines. So not a big deal if it doesn't. All right, so I'm gonna get this last little bit with purple. And the nice part too is you're using washable markers. So even if you get it all over you, um, it will wash right off. All right, so there's that one. I'm gonna set it off to the side. Like I said, even if it dries a little bit when we spray this paper um, or wet the paper with our brush, it's gonna reactivate it. So I don't have to worry about that. Um, I'm gonna come over to my rectangle and we're gonna do a design on here. So this would be good for older kids um, who kinda wanna do their own thing and they want to create a picture um, one thing you do have to be careful with is words. So anything that you're wanting to print, you're gonna have to do backwards. So make sure that you um, let your kids know about that um, if they're wanting to do a word. Because if they just write it on here, when they print it, it will be backwards. But sometimes that's a good learning experience too because they kind of figure out, oh, well, that's it's printing the opposite or a mirror image of what I'm drawing. All right, so we're gonna draw, um, hmm, I don't know, what do we wanna draw today? Let's do, um, let's do a truck. I got a truck sitting right here in front of me. All right, so we're just gonna do just a simple truck. I'm going in with my pencil first, okay? And I'm gonna just kind of outline where I want my truck to go. All right, and then I've got my hood of my truck there. I've got the fender there. All right, and then my bumper there. Let's do a tire right there. Let's see. Go up there with our fender, and then I'll come around here. Let's see. I'm looking at a truck to draw this, so this is not from memory. I do not have that ability. All right, so here is my window. door handle there. All right, so now we're gonna put in the bed of the truck. So we're gonna come out here 
we're gonna get our tailgate drawn. I've got a tail light there and my bumper there. Let's see, we'll go over with our fender just a little bit. Let's see, we'll go that way like that. All right, so drawing for us moms may seem intimidating. However, when you're working on drawing, this is one thing that I, um, I teach in a lot of my classes. Just look for simple shapes, okay? So um, another way that you can do this is to um, get some tracing paper. And if your child finds an image that they want you to draw or want they want to draw, all you've got to do is um, get that image to the size that you need it um, for your surface or your paper. And then um, simply just transfer it onto that surface. Um, so like for this one, you could, um, you could do that with transfer paper, um, or you can just color on the back of the paper and kind of put the image on, or you'd put the image down on here and just trace the image that you're wanting to put on your surface. And then um, all you gotta do is come back and just trace over to deepen your lines, all right? So, but if you look for simple shapes, um, that helps tremendously when you're just trying to freehand something. So we're gonna come back in with our ballpoint pen and now I'm gonna make sure that I'm, like when I did it with the pencil, I kinda would go back over stuff and move the lines and that sort of thing. So what I'm wanting to do now is come in and really deepen those lines. And I really want to make sure that I'm getting those, um, those grooves in there and that my lines are going where I really want them to, okay? All right, so let's do that window there, okay? All right, so all of that is done. Next, we're gonna come in and do the hood again, and sometimes it helps just to turn things around. All right. And we're gonna do this again with the Crayola markers. So um, you're gonna see how this changes um, just a little bit, but um, we're gonna be able to, once it dries, come back and outline it with Sharpie or a pen of some sort and make it um, have that nice crisp line on it. So it really won't um, mess it up too much. And that's always a good finishing touch with anything that you do is to go back and do like a black line or a white line just to kind of bring it all together. All right. that tail light in there and then we are gonna go in and get those last couple of lines there okay so now I have my truck drawn I'm gonna get ready and get my markers so that I can get this colored in and let's see I think I want to go with a red truck um See, I need a black marker for the tires. And I'm gonna go with gray for like my rims. And I might go with like a light blue for the windows. All right, and then I can also do a background. So I'm gonna throw in that turquoise there. Graphic green is the name of that one. All right, so let's see. Um, so same thing here, you just wanna color in everything um, and 
Just make sure you kind of stay in the lines a good bit. Now, where I'm going over these lines, they're actually gonna print out white. And that's where your, um, like your black line when you get done, that could go there. Um, and it just kind of gives you a good outline of where you need to go back and finish up your piece. All right, so we're gonna color all of that in. I wanna get my fender as well. All right, so um, while I'm coloring this in, I, um, I just am curious how many of you are um, excited that your kids are gonna be home for an extra week or two? Um, how many of you are nervous about it? Just um, like with it being so unexpected, I guess. Um, you know, we know that they're gonna be home during the summer and all of that kind of stuff, but this was kind of a, on a whim, it seemed like. You know, I know it's not a decision made on a whim, but um, you know, how many of you are nervous about them being home and how many of you are excited that you get to have them for an extra few weeks? Let me know in the comments. Um, we homeschool, so uh, my kids are home all the time, but we do, um, we are a non-traditional student at our middle school here in Montebello. Um, because our, our son plays sports there. So um, so we are enjoying having a little bit of a break where we're not having to be on the go all the time. Um, and we only have four weeks of school left, period. So um, we are winding it down anyway. Um, so they, they're not really getting a break, but it'll be all right. They enjoy what they're doing, so it makes it makes it a lot easier. All right, so there's my tire, and I'm gonna come back with my gray in just a minute and um, work on my bumpers and my rims and the window trim and all that. All right, so there's that. All right, I kind of brought in some of that black, but that's okay, it's, it's not gonna hurt anything. I'm just gonna do my lights in gray as well, just to keep things simple. And then I want to come in and do that trim right there in gray. All right, so now, ooh, I didn't do my handle. I didn't do my door handle. All right, so now we're gonna come in. I'm gonna do my windows in like a light blue just so it kind of gives it the look of a reflection. The really cool thing about doing these is um, you can reuse them so many times until it just falls apart. Um, and so it makes it really nice if you don't like something, you can just clean it off and reuse it. Um, or if a color doesn't work the way, like the way you thought it would, um, then you can just very easily uh, clean it off and reuse it. So we're gonna come in and get this background colored in. I'm not completely worried about going directly to my line um, because this is gonna expand a little bit when we wet the paper. So it's gonna move that paint just a little bit or that marker just a little bit and so with this being like an actual image um i'm just wanting to get close to that line but i don't have to go all the way to it all right okay if you are watching and are local we are still um open for business as of right now, um, unless we're told otherwise, but um, we are limiting our class sizes and making sure everything gets nice and sanitized in here in between classes. So um, we are still um, open for business and we're still rocking along with classes as of right now. So um, if you are not comfortable um, sending your child to a class um, or if you want to do one of the workshops that we have on our schedule, but um, 
you're just you're not comfortable getting out and that sort of thing um, in a group of people then let me know and we can do a take-home kit for you um, and for our kids classes you can um, come and get your child's uh, work and they can take it home and work on it this week if they want to um, we already we're going to be closed next week for spring break um, because we have kind of a three-day spring break camp as well um, that we're still planning on hosting if you want to sign up for that um, It'll be Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. Um, so we're still here, and we're just doing the best we can to keep everything nice and clean and healthy um, for all of our, our folks to come in and have some fun. All right, I am going to go back in because, if you notice, I, um, I didn't really do anything in this space, so I'm going to go back in with some red right there and just kind of fill in that little space right there. Um, we have, however, taken off our preschool playgroups just with them, you know, putting stuff in their mouth and all of that. We're, we're going to hold off from those for now um, and probably we'll start those back in the summer um, or possibly the fall. So if you were looking at that and couldn't find it on the schedule, that's why. So, um, all right. So now we have two images that we can print. Um, I'm going to show you if I can pick it up. Good gracious. Um, all right, there we go. It kept running away from me. All right, so I'm going to put that one off to the side. We're going to print this one first. And let's see. I'm going to move all of this out of my way. All right, so for this one, I'm trying to make sure it's where y'all can see it. All right, there we go. All right, so we're going to tape this down. And that way... Um, Let's see. Okay. Whoop. My internet finally caught up. And <laughs> there we go. Okay. All right. So we are going to tape this down just so that we can see um, or we can keep it flat. Um, because it's wanting to curve up on us and I don't want that because I don't want my water and my paint rolling everywhere all right so just a small border it doesn't have to be measured or exact or anything like that um, this just helps hold it down now this is really fun when you do this with watercolor because it does give you a nice crisp border and um, it just it looks really nice when you take it off and you've got that white border around it. All right, so we are going to take our, I'm going to do my flat brush just because it will cover a good amount of space and I'm just going to come in and kind of put down some water. I don't want it to be puddled up on here, but I also don't want it to be dry because it's not gonna um, take the, the color off of the styrofoam if I have a dry piece of paper, okay? So I don't want it soaking wet, and this just takes some practice and playing around with it. Um, if you don't have it wet enough, um, the color will not come off onto the paper and if you have it too wet it'll all run together and you'll be able to tell so it just takes getting getting used to what you need um, and sometimes it takes two or three prints for it to actually uh, work and do like you want it to all right so what you're going to do now is um, typically we would take the paper and put it on top of the printed surf or the colored surface but because i taped this down i'm going to go ahead and do the opposite on this one and I'm just gonna put a little bit more water on there because it dried up on me in a hurry. All right. So, there we go. Let's see what we get. All right. So what you wanna do is you want your child to lay this down on the paper upside down and you wanna tell them just give it a good massage. So two, two to three fingers on here and you can already see the color um, is coming onto the paper and you just wanna make sure that you're massaging it all over. Um, a lot of times this is easier for kids if they're standing up, um, just so that they can uh, 
you know, put a little bit more pressure on it. Um, it's a little bit easier than if they're sitting down. All right, so this is gonna be really cool. All right, so let's see what we got. So you wanna take the edge, just like this, and we're gonna lift up. And so we may have had a little bit too much water on this one, um, so that might be something that I'd do next time. I probably could have been okay if I had not put that second layer right before I printed, um, but it's still really cool. So we would let that dry, and, um, and then you could come back with Sharpies. If you are not okay with Sharpies, just trust me. Um, if you do it with supervision and you teach them how to use it, um, that can be a lot of fun for kids. So, um, you know, you may have to put them up once you're done, but um, we let even our little ones use Sharpies in here um, because they're so much fun and they do a lot of cool things. All right, so we're gonna take this up and I'm just gonna set it off to the side. I'm just gonna pull it up tape and everything um, and I'll have to let that dry before I can come back with a Sharpie. Um, you can get these done uh, dry faster with the hair dryer if you want to, um, or you can just let them dry naturally. It is totally up to you. All right, so this one, we're gonna go sideways because we are doing this truck. All right, let's see. And I may just tape the top and the bottom on this one. I don't know. Let's see. And as you can see, my borders are not exact. I'm not measuring this out or anything like that. I'm simply just putting some tape down and going with it. All right, so let me see. Oh yeah, perfect, okay. So it's not gonna matter because I'm not gonna have a border on this anyway. All right, so we're gonna go in and we're gonna put this water down and I'm gonna put a little bit less this time just so you can see what you would get if you don't go back and put a second coat on there like I did the first time. Um, let's see. All right, so my paper is nice and wet, but not too wet. And I'm just going back and making sure it's not puddled up or anything like that. Um, okay, so we're gonna do this again. And now remember, this is gonna be backwards, so my truck's actually gonna be facing the opposite direction. We're gonna kinda center that in our rectangle of water and you just want to make sure you don't move it like slide it across the paper because if you do that then when you um pick it up your colors are all going to be smeared and your your image is going to be smeared as well all right so we are going to massage that really well get those details in there and see what we get All right, you ready? Let's see what we've got now. Okay, and there is our image. So it does much better if you don't have as much water on there. Um, and then again, I would let this dry really well and I would um, come back with a Sharpie and outline the image. So I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna dry this on here, but I will be posting in the comments for this video uh, once it is dry, I'll go back and outline it with a Sharpie. Um, you do wanna make sure it's nice and dry because the Sharpie will tear the paper and it'll run um, if it, it'll bleed into the other color. So you do wanna make sure that it's nice and dry um, before you come back and outline it just so that it doesn't do all those things. Um, so I will be posting some pictures in the comments of these. If you guys try these, um, I would love to see pictures. So if you are um, doing any of these activities this week with your kids, make sure you tag us in um, any of your pictures that you, if you take pictures of what you make. And then also um, you can use the hashtag, um, the art studio Montevallo. Um, and we would love to see what you're making. So um, 
We will be back tomorrow at three o'clock um, Central Time, and we'll be making something fun again tomorrow. Um, and then I will also have some information up about the um, the survival kit, the creativity survival kits. Um, so these would basically just be supplies that you might not have on hand, um, but you don't really want to go to the store to get them because you don't want to get out in the midst of people. Um, I completely understand that. So. Anyway, we will be back tomorrow at three o'clock. Hope that you will join us. And like I said, if you do some of these activities, let us know by tagging us in it. Um, and if you know of a mama that needs to see these, let her know. Um, and you can, uh, you can let her know in the comments as well. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great rest of your Monday and we'll see you tomorrow.